Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Zheng Wang, an associate professor at Sun Yat-sen University. Now, let me present our work for you. This is a joint work with my great collaborators from Damo Academy and Renmin University of China. Our research is about the neural scaling law in node classification tasks and how to exploit the data cloning strategy to improve this scaling. Particularly, we conduct our study on web scale graphs. Throughout this presentation, I will walk you through. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Zheng Wang, an associate. As you have seen in recent years, observing and analyzing the neural scaling laws of deep neural networks have attracted much attention from both academia and industry. However, existing works mainly focus on data modalities such as images and text, while graph data, which are ubiquitous in practice, have somewhat been ignored. In node classification tasks, it is commonly the case that there is one large graph, and both the training and test nodes are accessible. The huge difference lies in that it is possible to exploit the test nodes in selecting helpful training nodes during the training phase of a machine learning pipeline. Even though the labels of test nodes are unavailable at that point, there have been lots of results, both theoretical and empirical, show that in some general cases, the performance of a deep neural network scales with the number of training examples under a power law. Unfortunately, this power law scaling often possesses a very small exponent, implying an unsatisfactory sample efficiency. When the training examples are redundant, such as the training nodes in a web scale graph, it is natural to consider pruning some of them while keeping the same or at least the comparable performance for the learned model. Research in this line mainly considers two kinds of principles. One is to prioritize hard examples while the hardness can be measured or estimated in many ways including entropy and robustness-based methods. Another is to maximize the diversity of reserved training examples, such as picking the typical examples from one each class of the data. In our paper, we first try to answer the question whether GNN also follows a power law scaling in typical node classification tasks. Thus, we conduct a random data pruning on three OGBN dataset. Specifically, we train graph SAGE, SGC, and GAT on these three datasets, respectively. Moreover, we randomly prune the training nodes with several different pruning rates, ranging from 80% to 10%. Then, we report the classification error rate versus the number of training nodes reserved in, the, in this figure. While both axes uh, are in log scale, as can be seen, in each case, a straight line well fits the plotted points, which implies a power law scaling. Meanwhile, the exponent is very small, implying an unsatisfactory sample efficiency. Such results motivate us to explore data pruning methods to improve the sample efficiency of training graph neural networks for node classification. Before we dive into our research findings, let's briefly introduce the concept of data pruning method. Data pruning is a technique used to selectively remove or reduce redundant training examples thereby improving the efficiency and effectiveness of machine learning models. In our study, we mainly consider this data pruning method. Intuitively, hard training examples should be kept, as the decision boundary is determined by the support vectors. This intuition has been confirmed 
for also deep models by a recent theoretical study called Beyond Neural Scaling Laws, Beating Power Law Scaling via Data Pruning. Existing methods measure hardness from diverse perspectives. EL2N scores retains the hardest training examples with the largest error. Memorization and influence scores evaluates memorization scores to identify examples that must be individually learned and influence scores to assess the impact of adding examples to the training set, potentially useful for pruning, although computationally expensive. Diverse examples, that is DDD, assigns scores to images based on misclassification by diverse ensemble models. Meanwhile, Diversity is regarded as another necessary consideration for a data pruning method. As it has been a consensus in large language model era that the diversity of corpus is critical to the ultimate performance. An interesting work, Age, pro proposes a composite metric where training examples that is training nodes for which the prediction inhibits higher entropy and higher personalized the page rank score would be preferred. Then we apply this SOTA data pruning method on these three graphs for gaining insights of data pruning in node classification tasks. In all the settings, there exists data pruning methods that can beat the random pruning, or say beating the original power law scaling. Before diving into the details of our method, let's see which motivates our test set targeted design. We conduct a comprehensive analysis of the results to understand the commonality of a successful and failed method. Specifically, we compute the mean degree, mean unnormalized page rank score, denoted by PR, and mean homophilic level, denoted by HOMO, for each specific group of training nodes. Well, groups corresponding to different quantiles in a ranking are considered. There are mainly three findings as we summarize here. For the first point, the mean homophilic level of all training nodes is 0 0.808, 0 0.976, and 0 0.502 on these three data sets respectively. Methods successfully outperforming random pruning always pick their top 20% of nodes so that the mean homophilic level is remarkably below the average level over the whole graph. Second, EL2N and DDD also prioritize nodes with heterophily, while the homophilic level of their top 20% of nodes is even lower than methods that have successfully beat random pruning. However, when the fraction of reserved training nodes is very limited, EL2N and DDD are remarkably surpassed by random pruning on OGBN papers 100 million and MAG 20, uh, 240 million. Actually, on both OGBM papers 100 million and MAG 240M, EL2N and DDD's mean values of PR are the smallest two among all adopted methods, not to say that those nodes top ranked by EL2N have very small degrees. In a word, only prioritize hardness is inadequate, 
and being representative of the entire training set is necessary for successful pruning. Lastly, the Sinai supervised the setting of node classification tasks allows data pruning methods to utilize the features of test nodes, which intuitively speaking is helpful for mitigating the distribution shift issue. The most salient characteristic distinguish our method from compared ones is its exploitation of the test nodes, which encourages subsets with fewer distribution shifts. Our findings can be consolidated into such a principle. Plausible subsets are supposed to be hard and representative for the entire training set, while mirroring hardness and representativeness regarding the given test set would be more effective. We proposed an optimization program to reflect this idea. Specifically, the bottleneck distance is defined as for any test node the largest possible minimum distance between it to the selected training subset, while the L2 norm distance is measured between two nodes' embeddings. In our study, it is surprising that a straightforward random work based on the propagation of original node features is effective enough. This is a variant of the classical K-Center program, and our proposed greedy algorithm can solve it more efficiently than the classical greedy algorithm that has not been tailored to this variant. In the paper, subgroup generalization and fairness of graph neural networks, the authors analyzed the performance fairness among different subgroups of test nodes. Our work adapts their theoretical results to the analysis of data pruning, that is, when analyzing the generalization risk of different subsets of training nodes on the given test set. More importantly, we eliminate the assumption of a uniform assignment, namely, each training node served as the closest neighbor to the same number of test nodes. Instead, we introduce a novel notion related to the max flow and use it to account for the representativeness of peak subsets in the generalization risk bound. In conclusion, we mainly draw three conclusions regarding the sample efficiency of node classification tasks in this paper, as we summarize here. As our empirical study and the assumption of our theoretical study are somewhat based on the homophily condition, for example, the distance is measured upon the node embeddings produced by simply random work based on the propagation. It is valuable to double check this conclusion. Thanks for your listening.